Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In the last video, we've got our food items up into the food log when we pick them from a meal, right? We loop through all the items in the meal, put them up in the log, but they're coming up in any random order. So we're going to fix that today with a seconds offset trick. And I was pretty proud of myself. So ready? Here we go. Alrighty, in the last video, we got it so we can add a meal, but if we add the meal, it comes in in kind of a random order, and that's because all the time indexes are the same, and this is sorting by time index, so you can't exactly be guaranteed what's going to be where. So like I mentioned last time, we're not, you know, we're not doing super, uh, like, Mars level, you know, Mars lander level, you know, we don't have to worry about it being to the millisecond. Right, I don't care if my lunch was at five o'clock or five fifteen. So we're gonna we're gonna just add a second to each one of these as they come in, so they come in in the right order. And this guy with the meal name is the first one. Is this the best solution? No, but it works perfectly fine. Sometimes you have to balance the needs of the database with how precise you you want to be and and how much work you want to put into it. Like I said in the last video, the best solution would be to have a custom sort field in here. But I think this works just fine for what we got. We're just going to add a small time offset. That's all. All right. So let's de delete this stuff. Let's go back to our code. And let's see. We're in the food log here. Where we got to be? We got to be right here. So in the loop here, we're going to say, give me a counter as a long. And the, we'll start the counter at zero. Okay. And then when we add the food item to the log, to the log, we're gonna send to it the counter. Now you're probably saying to yourself, "Well, wait a minute, we don't have that." Well, yeah, we gotta add that. So now let's go into here. Okay, and now we're gonna add one more optional variable. Optional. We'll call this the uh, seconds offset as long equals zero. Always gotta give a default value. So that's how many seconds we're going to offset this item by. All right, makes sense. Even, even when I'm adding items manually, I almost never add more than one item per second. Like it's going to be like click and then, okay, what's the next thing? Okay, and then click. Even if I'm typing, it's going to be at least two or three seconds. So I think this method's going to work just fine. Okay, all right. So how do we, how do we deal with that? Well, the time happens right here. Okay, so the food date time in the log is the proper log date time, which we figured that out. We, that's, we did a whole other lesson on that one. So right here, we're going to say if the seconds offset is not zero. I'm, I'm, I'm making it not zero because in the future, I mean, we, we might have a, an offset that goes negative. So we'll, this is future proof, future proofing. Say that 10 times fast. Future proofing. The judicial system, <laughs> another quote. All right, if the seconds offset is not zero, then do some stuff. Okay, what's that stuff? We're gonna add that many seconds to the food date time. All right, so RS log food date time equals date add seconds. How many seconds? The seconds offset, offset, comma, to what value? The RS log food date time. All right. And then this guy will format it properly. And that's it. That's just adding a second to each successive item as the counter comes in. Now we also, if we're going to do this, we also want to make sure that the items come in from the SQL statement in the right order because we're pulling out a food T. Um, that's the other loop. Where is it? Where is it? Right here, right? The meal detail T, because the meal is gonna have these items in here in this meal. So we wanna make sure they come in in the same order. Now, again, you could set a custom sort order field in here, which would be the, you know, in a perfect world solution if you're dealing with Mars landers. But again, I'm just gonna base it on the ID. Is it perfect? No, but it's good enough. We could just base it on the detail ID. So when we do this here, we're just going to sort it by meal detail ID. Where da 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 da, and then we'll put it in here. Um, order by. Actually, we got to put a space in front of it. Don't forget the space. 
because we got meal ID equals a number, and then we need to make sure we have a space order by meal detail ID. That way we're making sure that they come in in the right order, right? We don't just, because technically that select statement without an order by could pull the records in any order, technically. It almost always pulls them in the table order, but it might not. Debug compile, everything compiles, and let's save it, close it, close it, close it, open it, and let's add that meal item again. Let's add Rick standard breakfast and go. And look at that. Oh, wait a minute. It's still backwards. Hold on. Let's see what happened here. Let's see where we messed up. All right. Let's go to the food log. Make sure they came in with the right time. Here's the last couple items. Okay. Yeah. So they, they still all have the exact time in there. So something in the code's not right. Let's go find it. Let's go hunting. Oh, I found it. I knew it right away what happened. What the data in the table should give you the clue as to what I did wrong. Pause the video, figure it out. This is a teaching moment and it has to do with my jelly filling. Well, you get it. We incremented the counter. We sent the counter to the food uh, function, but guess what we didn't do? We didn't counter equals counter plus one. And that's a common mistake and I make it all the time. Let's get rid of some of this empty space in here. I usually leave my blocks like that with spaces between them. And then when I'm all done, I tidy up. Like this really could be one line, but I like to keep it short like this so it fits on the screen for you. Okay, one more time. Debug compile. Let's close it. Let's delete the stuff in here that we don't need. And let's try it one more time. Are you ready? It should work this time. Let's bring in fish, rice, and veggies. Go. Oh, wait, no. Go. And there we go. They come in in the right order. You see your fish, rice, and veggies. Let's check the log. And you can see there we go right there. 49, 50, 51, 52. And over the course of three seconds, you're not going to add a second meal over the course of three. I mean, and if you do, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Just wait another second longer. Again, I think for the purposes of this database, that's fine. I don't think it's a problem. If anybody thinks it's a problem and you guys really want to see me tackle it, a better way like if you are building a database where you're you know you need your calculations accurate to the second all right let me know maybe we'll do a different video on it but i think for this particular for, for this particular database and most real world business databases right second accuracy is something you generally don't need usually it's minute level accuracy for business purposes right i don't know anybody who bills by the second except maybe my lawyer no, I'm just kidding. My lawyer's a great guy. Um, but, you know, we're not doing fancy, you know, like I said, you know, NASA level stuff here. If you, if you are, let me know. This is, you know, for most business databases, I think this is a good, you know, a good enough solution. All right. So, so now we're all set with meals here. You could do, uh, let me, let me get rid of this. Let me clear this off here. You think, you guys think we need to delete all, all stuff from the one day. That was just easy enough to do, did, 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 did it, right? Um, so now you can add your breakfast, right? You come in here. If if you're like me with your meals, you know, you got breakfasts as breakfast. Okay, which breakfast am I having? This one. Add it. Right? And then lunches. Do I have lunches and stuff? No, I don't. And my and my other thing I do I have them listed that way in my in my Excel spreadsheet. But let's say for lunch I'm doing my tuna. No, not tuna. Fish, is it under? Yeah. My uh my my fish, rice, and veggies. Add. Okay. And, and these came in, it's not a whole minute longer, but you'll have the right times in here. And then for dinner, you know, what, what are we doing for dinner? We're going to do, um, well, let's say, uh, I don't know, we'll do uh, Rick's coffee for dinner. <laughs> but you can see the meals are working now. They're coming in properly. And you can come in here and say, okay, I, I had uh, two and a half cups of rice with this meal. Right? And I had uh, three veggies with this one and so on. And it's working. Okay. Um, next up, let me close this database. Save changes. Yes. Next up, we're going to add in the stuff that I put in my own database, which doesn't have the other thing in it, which was this copy item guy that I teased with teased you with a few videos ago. So we're going to do this next. So you could say, okay, hey, I want to just add uh, this Atlas bar and chicken fajita. So you can go copy item, copy item. And it adds those two right to today. Where'd they go? Right there. 
See? All right, we'll do that in the next video. So, uh, so now we're good with them adding the meals to the log. That was the big thing. So that was what, three or four videos it took us to do that. But I think it's good. I think it's worth it, All right? You guys like that? Give me some comments down below. Tell me how I'm doing. Tell me if you're enjoying this stuff. Are you using it for other projects? You know, share with the class. And if you like, if you're, if you're using these techniques in, in your databases, if you're a member on my website, which you should, you know, hopefully you, you, you will be, um, you could post like screenshots and stuff and show us your work, show us what you're doing. I love seeing that kind of stuff. All right, so that's going to do it for part 44, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.